Good morning everybody and welcome to this week's edition of the RDA Central West Business Leaders Breakfast and I'm really excited because sitting next to me this morning is Ash Brown, the President of the Orange Business Chamber and Director of One Agency Orange. Ash, good morning to breakfast. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, great to have you here Ash and um, a lot of people know you from your work in the real estate game around town here in Orange and through the Business Chamber. Um, but for those viewers that might not know your story, you've had a long connection to Orange and you've uh, a long connection to business. You're happy to give our viewers this morning a little bit of an update, I guess, of your journey um, to becoming Orange um, Business Chamber President and some of that experience you've gained through some of those, you know, your business dealings. Yeah, sure. Um, I've been in, look, business is in our family, it's in my blood. Um, I've been in many uh, businesses over the years, um, probably in different industries too. So I, I guess I have a real handle on what business is about. Um, and I've been in business for probably around 30 odd years um, in different types of businesses. Um, been involved in the Chamber of Commerce for about 20 years on and off um, in committees. Um, and the opportunity uh, came up to jump in the top position a couple of years ago. So I decided to to move into that position and try and make a difference. I'm, I'm passionate about business, I'm passionate about helping people. Um, so I just thought it was a good opportunity. Um, we have a great board, um, they're very proactive. We're always thinking of new ways that we can make business better in Orange and District. Um, yeah, so that's that's how I've ended up in, in the position that I, I am. Yeah, and mm. look, you kind of touched on it there, Ash, you've had a long history in business. and. I guess being uh, the president of the chamber, uh, there's been a lot of challenges for the local business community over recent months, you know, with the, the mm. ongoing impacts of the drought, we rolled into the bushfires and now COVID. Um, what kind of feedback has the chamber been getting from local businesses around town mm. and how are they travelling? Look, it, it, it is, it's pretty bad. Um, I don't think I've, anyone's seen a situation like this with business. Um, different businesses are, are affected in different ways. For example, obviously tourism, hospitality, um, retail, um, um, gymnasiums in, in that industry, fitness, they've been hit extremely hard. Um, and, and then you get other businesses like small supermarkets which have done really well out of this. So there's been a mix. Um, we're trying to support those ones that have been hurt. Um, we, we're putting out a lot of information, um, especially with applications to uh, job keeper. Um, that was quite a difficult process. It all happened very quickly and people were very confused. We were talking to our members, talking, we don't just talk to our members, we talk to our business community as well. And trying to walk them through as we were learning what was happening at the time as well. With COVID, it's been, it, everything's been extremely fast, um, as you probably know. Um, things weren't moving in weeks and months and years like normally uh, with government um, legislation. This was happening hours and days, hours and days. And, and what was happening this morning might have been different by the afternoon. So it was a time where we had to be watching, watching, watching and feeding that information through as soon as we got it within the hour sometimes back to our members and the business community. Yeah, I think one of the, the positives in this unprecedented scenario has probably been the collaborative way that the different business chambers have worked together, different um, not you know NGOs or organisations like RDA, BizHQ, they've all rolled out a number of different webinars and I guess support measures for the local businesses yeah. and the broader community. I think it's been well received. I guess, you know, we're heading into the long weekend. Yep. Um, some of the restrictions are started to roll back, which is yes. fantastic, and I'm, I'm confident mm -hmm. it's gonna be absolutely buzzing around town this weekend. Um, we're, as, as I said, we're going into the recovery phase. Mm -hmm. What are some of the levers that you would like, I guess, governments, both state and federal, to start looking at, you know, now we're looking to that medium, longer term, and how best can community members that want to support local businesses do that over the long weekend? Yeah, um, good question. Um, I guess we're calling it the rebound out of this. And it, it's we're, we're still in the woods. We're not out of the woods yet. Um, 
the, I guess the difficult situation is once again we're in uncharted territory, so we don't really know what's going to happen. What we do know is that Australia is probably in one of the best positions in the world to be coming out of this. Um, we have very low positive rates right now for, of COVID. Um, and, and orange even better. Like if you take orange out of the equation of Australia, we're, we're probably one of the best cities in the world to be, to be coming out of this. The Chamber is, is looking, and I'm on a couple of committees, one with Council, one with Biz HQ. There's some pretty uh, exciting announcements coming up um, with some privateers, and I've said that, I, I can't say right now, but we are talking with some private uh, companies that are putting um, their own stimulus package into Orange for businesses that have fallen through the cracks um, of the stimulus package from the government. Um, so that's, that's coming up and that'll be announced tomorrow. Um, uh, so look, we're look out for that but it, it's so important to make sure these businesses that fell through the cracks do get support on the way out we don't want businesses to close especially local good businesses just because they didn't get that stimulus package and and i guess to answer your question we would like government to look at those businesses and, and say all right you were two percent under the threshold what can we do for you because Someone that hit it by 2% mm -hmm. is getting all this money to support their business, but if somebody was under the 30% by 2%, they miss out. Yeah, and, and that's a difficult one. Yeah, it's a fair point. Mm -hmm. And I know, I think like the ATO Commission has a bit of discretion around some of those thresholds, but it's something that you hope they actually put into action. Because yes, you're right. You don't want to just miss the boat by, <coughs> by a millimetre, so to speak, yeah. or fall through the cracks. And I think one of the other things that's important and uh, something that RDA has been pushing from our perspective as well is, now that we're starting to come through the recovery phase, it's the rolling out those kind of small to medium infrastructure projects around town that yes. government, those levers government can pull because that usually translates into a strong um, local, uh, local suppliers, local traders getting yes. the work and the economic multiplier <laughs> of those projects around town is very strong. Yep. And it's really important now that we keep supporting those Absolutely. businesses where we can. And I think you would see this through your experiences with the chamber and, and, uh, and private business. Small businesses get uh, tapped on the shoulder every day of the week yep. by community <coughs> groups, sporting clubs to support them, to, to support the community and I guess yep. It's something we've said over recent weeks here is if there's an opportunity for the community to support those businesses now, they need it more than ever, I guess. Yeah. Look, I love that the government is now, and, and for years and years they've been pushing by local, meeting Australia. I think we could start something that, that will really get traction now because people understand that now is the time that we need to buy local. We need to make that money turn around three, four, five, ten times in our community and stay here and more than ever we need that to happen. So we're hoping that some groups, whether it be government or private groups, push that. Council I know is looking at it, um, where they're going to um, give the jobs where they can to, mm -hmm. to locals um, and just keep that money staying in the community because once once you take the dollars out of the community, it's gone. And, and they do say that sometimes money can spin around in the community 10 times. Yeah, and I think it's probably a good lesson for all our viewers this morning as we head into the long weekend. If you've got visiting family, friends and relatives coming to Orange this weekend, or to the Central West for that matter, you know, if you've got a chance, take them down to the local coffee shop, grab, them, grab breakfast, grab some delicious dinner or do your bit around town because as Ash has touched on, it's really important now more than ever to get that circular economy going Absolutely. and supporting those businesses. Yeah. Now, you're the director of one agency, yes. Orange. <coughs> Real estate is known as a very competitive industry, uh, but what tips have you learned through your experiences in the real estate game and I guess running your other businesses over the years um, that you think uh, would be helpful tips for other business owners that might be out there listening in this morning? Look, it, I don't think it matters what business you're in and where you are in the world. And, and we've all travelled around the world, in Australia, 
locally. The one thing that just keeps coming through time after time for me is customer service. And people don't forget it. People really don't forget it. Um, it's how you feel after you've come out of that experience or you've been in that store or you've um, touched base with, with the person. If you've had a good customer service from them, you won't forget it, you'll come back. And, and that doesn't matter what you're in a coffee shop, uh, right through to, to government. Um, you'll, if you get good customer service, you'll keep coming back. It's really simple and that, that creates loyalty. And when you've got loyalty, it trumps everything. Yeah, it's a fair point. We always, and I guess we're all creatures of habit, aren't we? We go yep. to our favourite cafe, hairdresser, whatever it might be, and it's usually down to the fact that you've got to have a good experience yep. there. Yep. And I guess investing in your staff is another one that I think is really important because good staff can yes. be the backbone of a good business. And someone once said to me that uh, you employ for will, but you train for skill. And I yes. think that's a fair point. If you're, if you're a business owner out there looking for staff, if there's a... If you're, potential staff member has the appetite for it, yep. you can kind of give them the skill set to maximise that in that position. Absolutely. Another thing yeah. that I thought we could touch on this morning, Ash, and it's something that I think you've done very well in, in your businesses that I've drew <coughs> through my research is the importance, I guess, of that online <coughs> uh, literacy, digital literacy. Um, how important <coughs> is that now in your business? Um, and what kind of platforms do you find the most effective and what kind of tips could you give to, to the viewers this morning? Look, I think it's so important um, to get um, digital technology and marketing through that right. And, and it doesn't come easily and it's different for every business. Um, we have looked at it and massaged it over the years. Um, find out what works for you. Um, keep trying new things, I, I guess, is the key. Try, like, We'll try different things every month, every quarter, and we, we don't sit still because in digital technology and marketing through that medium, it's it's a changing world. What what was popular a month ago could be yesterday's news now. So you've got to be thinking of something new, trying different things, and some work and some don't. But Stick with the ones that work and don't think that they'll be forever because they might work now, but they may not in two or three months. It's a good point. Think about this. I think uh, the iPhone only came out in 2008. So in yeah. the scheme of your business career, that's not that long ago. And someone told me the other day that Facebook's for old people. So it just shows you that, uh, <laughs> that, yeah. that technology changes rapidly and platforms change. And something that we ran a series of webinars through RDA over the, the last few weeks. And one of the, the take home messages from that kind of feeds into what you just said, Ash, that know your customer. Know your customer, envisage the, the, the ideal customer that you're looking for, and then look at the platform that they're using. So yeah. um, if you're looking for, if you've got a very visual product um, and you're looking for female customers, maybe Instagram's for you. Yeah. If you're looking at younger customers, it's maybe Instagram, now TikTok, you know, and, and trying to change up your platform if it's yes. a business to business relationship that you're looking for, potentially LinkedIn, LinkedIn. which I know that you're mm -hmm. very strong on. Yes. Um, do you think that's fair comment and is that your kind of take home as well? Yeah, absolutely. So look at who your customer is. Um, if they're, like you said, if they're a business customer, you need to, to be strong in LinkedIn. Um, Kez, um, sorry, um, Pip Brett, I'm thinking of her mum, but Pip Brett is a good example. She's very strong on Instagram and, and got a huge follow. I, I think it's like a thousand, ten thousand, it, it's thousands of people that follow her every single day and she posts every hour almost. And so that's important to her. Like for me, I, I'm on Instagram, but I, I do find um, a lot of our customer or our clients in real estate are looking at Facebook and LinkedIn. Yep. Um, and we know that LinkedIn um, is business people and business people for me um, usually own property. So that's a target market for us. Uh, so we do have a strong following on LinkedIn. LinkedIn doesn't have a lot of fluff in it. When I mean fluff, someone might get up in the morning and talk about what they had for breakfast. They'll probably talk about a project that they're going to do today. There's less likes, there's less comments, but there's certainly people noticing it. Mm. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true. And it's something that even RDA, you know, having a good 
that digital online presence is absolutely yeah. important. And good shout out, good segue there for Pip Brett, who's one of our mentors through the 10 for 10 leadership program. And you're right, even during the whole COVID scenario, I know um, Pip was putting up daily tips for yeah. small business through Instagram, yeah. I think, which was really well received. So yeah. we're Pip. a big supporter of Pip, g'day. <laughs> yeah, good stuff, thank you. Um, my next question is kind of following on from your, your real estate background. <coughs> When someone's looking to sell a property, um, they're always looking at ways to kind of add value. What are a couple of insiders tips for potential um, property owners that might yeah. be tuning in this morning that might be looking to, to sell that property? Yeah. Or on the flip side, what are a couple of things they should look out for if they're looking to purchase a property? Okay, so if you're selling your property, put yourself into the shoes of the buyer. So. They say that when someone walks into a house, they'll make a decision within seven seconds, this is the research, seven seconds that they'll either love the place, they'll be impartial about the place, or they won't like it, within seven seconds. So if they love it, we've got them. If they're impartial, we've got to work on them. Mm -hmm. If they don't like it, we'll never get them, within seven seconds. So what that means is they're walking up the path to the front door, and they're opening the door, and by the time they're in the foyer, they've made that, that decision. So from that, I always say to people, first impressions are so important. So when you get out of the car, what you're seeing mm. right there is so important. Of course the inside's gotta be beautiful too, but if you've got a beautiful inside of your house and you just thought, I'll oh, let the lawns go and the garden go and I won't paint the front door, mm. You might have lost them before they got to the beautiful part inside. So it's from the first second that someone gets out of their car and walks to your house, they've got to be impressed. So it's all about presentation. That, that's my big tip because we don't want to have to fight back and try and get them on board just because your, your front lawn and, and your, the front of your house wasn't well presented. Yeah, it's ab that's a good point. And it's probably a good point just for general business as well. Like yep. if, you're, if you're a customer focused business, just getting people through the door, they reckon, you know, if you get someone into your business, that's 90% of the sale. Because if they're in the business, yep. they're more likely to spend dollars once they walk through the front door. So I think absolutely. that's that's an absolutely, that's a good tip. I feel like the long weekend, I might have to go spruce up the garden. So <laughs> there you go. Um, this is the, my, one of my favourite sections of each uh, business breakfast chat. We call it Fast Five. It's where we ask our special guest, Ash, a couple of questions, a bit off track to find out a little bit more about yourself yep. and give our viewers a little bit more insight into to what makes you tick. Mm -hmm. And my first question is, what's your favourite hobby or hidden talent? I wouldn't say it's a talent, but um, I used to play in a rock band, drummer. Um, what kind of, are we talking like heavy rock? Are we pub talking? rock. Pub, pub rock, rock. Okay. Yeah, I used to play down at the Knobles when, when you could be in a pub. But look, they used to pay us to play in that band. I would have done it for nothing. I'd, I'd come out of that and they'd give me some money to play for the night and I'd think, oh, that's a bonus because I really enjoyed my night playing um, in the band. They were good mates in the band. We were you a bit of a Phil Collins? Were you the, the, the singer, drummer? Nowhere or? near <laughs> it. Nowhere near it. That's why I say don't talk about talent with me. But... It was just good fun, and um, yeah, look, I, I hope to get back into it, you know, soon. We're very busy in our business, but it's certainly, it was a great release for me. Okay, yeah, and mine is, uh, mine's my running. Love a bit of running, so. I've seen you running around town. Yeah, so yeah. if you see, see us out and about, um, yeah, yeah, and I think that's a good, another good thing about Orange is there's so many good community groups, sporting organisations here to, yeah. if you've got hobbies. Yes. And I know there's a really strong music fraternity here there is, in yeah. Orange. And we've got such talent, not like me. <laughs> I'm probably underselling yourself, I reckon. Yeah. Um, now, yeah. if someone was to play you in a movie of your life, yeah. who do you reckon it could be? Or who would do a good job? Um, well, who's, look, a, who's a good actor that you rate that yeah, could, could do yeah. the role? Um, look, I've, my favourite movie is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Okay, so good. Yep. There's a few... There's a few characters in there that, that I can gel with. Yeah. I, I've watched that movie probably 15, 20 times. I reckon I'll probably, <laughs> I'm at double digits. It's a classic and I reckon it was one of those yeah. first kind of, uh, first movies of that kind yeah. of genre, I reckon. I've shown it to my kids and they love it just as much. It's one of those timeless movies. We're going back through those 80s yeah. movies now, Top Gun, yeah. 
um, you know, all those good old ones. But Ferris Bueller, yeah, I think. Yeah. Matthew um, Broderick, good actor. Absolutely. He kind of peaked in the mid nineties. I don't know what kind of happened. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened, but he's just hilarious. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a good, good, good movie and good actor. Now, the Central West, we've kind of touched on it. Plenty of awesome opportunities. But what would you say is one of the hidden gems of the Central West? So this could be a person, a place, or a venue. Oh, look, I'd have to say Federal Falls. Um, people turn up to Orange and, and it's a great walk. It really is, and I think it should be showcased. A lot of people still haven't been on that walk. I know, I haven't, been, I haven't done it yet. Yeah. I did uh, Boronor Caves the other week, yeah. and I reckon that is another cracker. Yeah. But Federal Falls, it's come up a couple of yeah. times in this segment. So and yeah. um, I think if you, if you wait till there's been a bit of a rain, like a rain uh, period through the week, It'll usually have the waterfall at the end. It's absolutely beautiful, but it, it's it's a fairly tough walk, but it's just beautiful. You, you wouldn't know, you could be anywhere in the world down there. Yeah, it's no, it's, uh, you're right. There is a lot of those fantastic, I guess, natural amenity that's in the region. Yeah. That I, think the, I think you're right. It's a lot of different walks and things you can do. That visitors come, they probably want to go check out the vineyard yeah. and some of the, the beautiful restaurants and stuff like that. That's probably another element that I think you're right, we could yeah. really promote. Um, so if you've got visitors for the long weekend, there you go, you heard it straight from Ash, Federal Falls. I'm pushing Boronor Caves, but there's two to choose from. So if you want to get out, if the mm. weather dictates that you can, I reckon there's probably a good one, a couple of good ones to choose from. Now the last book you read or movie you saw? Uh, look, I've got about six books um, on my bedside table, and, and um, but look, I love The Alchemist. Um, it's a great book. It's got a really good message through it. But I'm, I'm more of a business book reader because I love getting insight into psychology of business. But if you want a book that's got a fantastic message, um, I won't I won't spoil it for the readers, but right through to the last page it's just one of those wow where it from from the beginning to the end it's just a beautiful story but right in that last few pages you realize why the story was what it was yeah. and it comes back and relates to the first page and, and I loved that simple simple fable mm -hmm. it was it was amazing and it's a, it's a classic seller it always sells and when when I had the bookshop many years ago, as you mentioned before we started, it, it was one of our best sellers there uh, by Palo Colo. Okay, well there you go, I forgot, we should have mentioned that. So Ash used to run Ash's bookshop yeah. on the main drag, yeah. and then mm -hmm. it had a cafe, I think, attached to it. Yes, yeah, we cafe. did, yeah. So yeah. there you go. So Hard back cafe. Well, that could almost be, be another interview in itself, just digging yeah, into some had of your best, of best, stories. best stories and best yeah. books. Yeah. Now, what yeah. would have your career path been if you weren't in real estate? Look, I guess when books started to be sold online, um, I realised that the bookshop wasn't going to, to be um, as profitable anymore, so we were looking for an exit strategy. And, and that's technology, you, you can't stop that happening, so we didn't fight it too much. Um, the first job I went for uh, when I got out of university many years ago was a, a job in real estate. Um, with Jones Lang Wooden back then. Um, and I got down to the final cut of three, I, that's what I was told, and, and I missed out getting that job. Then my uh, mum said to me, come home and work in the bookshop for a couple of years and then you can go and apply for another real estate job. Fast forward 25 years in the books and um, that's how I ended back in real estate. So instead of one or two years, it yeah. turned into 25. One or two decades. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, I love real estate. I love my job. I say to people, it's if, if you love your work, it's so easy. I bounce out of bed every morning. I get excited. First thing I do is look at what I'm going to do for the day and wonder how I'm going to fit it all in. Um, I'm usually home by 6, 6.30 sit down, enjoy a bit of time with the family. It's, it's, it's a great life. I've, I've got a good life in real estate. And, and um, it's really funny with real estate because you, you get people that stay with you. I had a, a guy call me from seven years ago. I sold him a house. He, he remembered me and I had him in my phone because I always put every person's name into my phone that I meet. Um, and I had him in, in my phone and he said, do you rem remember me? And I said, yes, I do. And he said, you sold me a house 
in the dark that you thought I'd like and I'm still in that house now I want to resell it and uh, I'm not calling anyone else in it's just you um, and to me that that's gold because it means that I've kept the relationship uh, with with that business customer they trust me and they want me to do the same job for them that I did when I was selling to them. And I think it kind of comes back to one of the first points you mentioned at the top of the interview, it's that custom service. Yeah, yeah making sure you spend the time to have that good custom service, because that's absolutely vital. Um, now, <coughs> another couple more questions, but what's your read on the current uh, real estate market, I guess, around town? Yep. And a bit of a two or three pronged question. <coughs> have you seen, has Airbnb changed the dynamic for say rental properties around the CBD in Orange, and has COVID changed that kind of makeup? Um, yeah. Look, there, it's an interesting question. So from the beginning of um, April, to be honest, we braced ourselves for the worst because we didn't know. Not like the world didn't know what was going to happen. Um, I, I guess I've always, if you look back at Orange's history, it's just this slow up moving curve for real estate over. The last 20 years it's it's a very strong market in orange we've got good employment here we've got what what's called old money in the town that that's money that keeps turning over in the town that stays here we've got good wealth in the town um, so through if you look back through say the GFC it was just a little blip on that up curve and I think fortunately so far um, Orange is um, holding very well during COVID. In our agency, um, we had quite a strong month of sales and, and properties going under offer. We were bracing for uh, price offer, lower offers, but that didn't happen. The good news for property owners, and, and I know you're a property owner and, and we are too, um, is that the price has held definitely steady we didn't see that drop that Sydney had. Um, so that's the good news. Um, Airbnbs in Orange, we did see a few come on the market where people were a little bit, I guess, worried that they couldn't uh, do the Airbnbs anymore and, and we've sold one or two of those for people. Um, some Airbnb uh, clients have gone into just renting mm -hmm instead of Airbnb, which is fine. They still get a very good return in Orange for that. And some just held off, and I know that this weekend, yeah. they're all full again. So that's really good news. So I guess for me, investing in property, and I always had right through my life, my parents instilled that into me at, a, at a, an early age, um, Orange has got a very good record. It's got good returns. It's got good capital growth. And I think it will keep going that way for us. We, we can't see it changing. Well, that's a positive <coughs> kind of read on the scenario. And I guess it probably helps as well. We've got a pretty diverse economy here in Orange and the Central West. If you think about, you know, DPI, health, yes. ag, and then, <coughs> you know, the mining kind of element as well. They're all important pillars of the local economy that probably yeah. take some of those big ebbs and flows off and gets it, keeps it a bit more stable, which I yeah. think is probably what play, plays into, plays into yeah. what you've just mentioned. Now... What would be your bold prediction for the remainder of 2020 for not only real estate, but for local business around town? Look, it's going to be tough. Let, let's talk about real estate first. I think real estate will hold, in my opinion, it'll hold steady. Um, there are some predictions of a bounce in spring, um, but we're already getting calls from Sydney people that are saying because of um, Zoom, working from home, um, people like are wanting to come out into regional areas, not just Orange, it could be Bathurst, Dubbo, Tamworth and, and, and so on. So we, I think there'll be a general flow of people that really have had enough of, of the big cities and want to move to the country. That's a good good thing for Orange. Yeah, it is actually. It probably just shows people that you can work remotely successfully. Absolutely. And it might just tip the the pendulum, I guess, to making, as you said, making those people decide if they want to make the move to the Central West. Absolutely. So I think property will hold, but going back to business, now that's a tough one, and that's where the Chamber comes in and, and we're out to help businesses. We, If businesses are hurting, please come forward 
and if they feel that they've fallen through the cracks, let us know. We have connections where we can put them in touch. Um, I'm also on the board of Biz HQ. Um, yeah, it's good, good, good segue and probably a good plug for Biz HQ because especially yeah. for businesses that might be doing it tough, they've got a, a team of, of expert specialists there, advisors there, so that can give you some of that support. Some of those things we've mentioned this morning, you know, the digital literacy, um, helping with those kind of business plans and yes, stuff like absolutely. that. Yep. Um, so yeah, Biz HQ, Wayne, Sunderland and the team there, they do good stuff. And yes. uh, we'll probably put their link up. If, if yeah, that'd be We'll good. put their link up on this, uh, this Facebook uh, chat after this morning. And if you want some more information, that's a good uh, point of call. Yeah, because they are out to help. So are we. we. I guess our fear is that there are businesses out there that, that are probably a little bit nervous about coming forward. We want them to come forward. We want to hear from them. So through the chamber, we're asking that they come forward. They let us know we're here to help uh, with just moral support, but also we could have some financial support uh, that, that may be able to come their way. And it could be just that difference. It might be paying that electricity bill through that month. It might be paying the rent for them for that month. It might be helping out with staff members that they were going to, to put off. There's all sorts of scenarios. We want to hear from them because we want business to bounce back strongly in Orange. And, and that's, that's the whole idea of this bounce back. Yeah, absolutely. And once a <laughs> business closes, yep. you know, it's pretty hard to reopen. Absolutely. We've just got to keep those doors open yep. as long as possible. But look, thanks, Ash. I guess if, if businesses or the community want to learn more about the business chamber or engage with the business chamber or yourself, what's the easiest way for someone to do that? Yeah, look, we are on... Um, we're on Facebook. This is what happens when you lie. <laughs> <laughs> we're on Facebook. We're on, on, on Google. So if you, um, if you go to Google and put in Orange Chamber, Orange Business Chamber, you'll find us. You can join the chamber. It's $198 a year, fully tax deductible. That also gives you membership to the state chamber, which gives you uh, free legal advice, free HR advice, we're going to be having a lot of networking events coming up. I think it's important for, for that. I know that's still, you know, a lot of money, $198, but over a year it's pretty good to be able to network with similar-minded businesses, get back into it, and we'll be getting back into it in July when we're allowed to have um, gatherings again of, of 50 or more because we think we'll need 50 or more. Um, hopefully they'll relax that a little bit more. We can get people networking, talking, helping each other. We've all got to help each other. Yeah, that's absolutely really probably a good way to finish up because it's the access to those resources as well that's absolutely vital. If you're a small business out there, you're so busy keeping the doors open, keeping things ticking over. Yeah. If, if the Chamber can support you, if Biz HQ can support you, if RDA Central West can support you, I guess that's that's our role. Yeah. And then that will give, I guess, confidence and skills to those businesses to keep ticking over. Yeah. But Ash, last question before we wrap up. <coughs> Yep. RDA Central West, we're running the 10 for 10 mentoring program this year. What's your one good tip that a previous mentor has given you that stayed with you and supported you, I guess, through your business journey? Look, I think just, I, I always talk about this with my staff, just show your energy. Um, if, if you're energetic, if you get up in the morning and, and you've got that energetic vibe and, and then you um, instill that through your staff and, and you keep positive, so positive energy, um, I think it, it then comes through with everyone else. If you lead from the top with energy, I think for me it seems to work. I, I, I feel that it comes back. Well, I think that's I think that's absolutely true. And an old footy coach of mine used to say, "Confidence breeds confidence," and it's kind of a, yeah. a similar similar concept. And I probably think it's a good way to finish. You know, we've been going through a tough period, but I think if we all stay positive and upbeat, I think I think that we're starting the pendulum starting to swing back in our favour. We're heading into the long weekend. Yeah. Let's support those local businesses where we can. Make sure you get those visiting family members and uh, relatives out and about this weekend. But look. Ash, thank you for your time. Thank you. It's been entertaining, yep. energetic and enjoyable. But for all of our regular viewers, make sure you are tuned in same time next Friday when I sit down with Sam Farraway, a member of the New South Wales Upper House. But until then, have a great day and a great long weekend and we'll catch you next week. Thank you.